Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, welcome to the lecture on response surface methodology under design and analysis of experiments. So, today I will introduce the concept called response surface methodo methodology, which is in abbreviated form we say RSM. Okay. So, RSM is a collection of mathematical and statistical techniques. Mathematical and statistical techniques. This purpose is to optimize, optimize the process outcome. Means, what I mean to say here that given a process with set of controllable factors, you want to set the controllable factors in such a manner that the response of the process will be the maximum or minimum depending on the characteristics of the response. In general, we can say the optimum response value. So, you want to achieve the optimum response from a process. This is my process inputs controllable add x, uncontrollable z, process steps, you got output. Now, question is that I want to optimize this output. So, where to set x? What is the zone of x? So, that you will get the optimum y. So, what is my desired value? Desired value is the minimum or maximum depending on if y is higher the better or lower the better or there may be a situation where a target value is important. So, here we are basically talking about the optimum value that means, it is either the maximum or the minimum value. If y is process yield, then definitely you want to set your controllable parameters in such a manner that y will be maximum. If y is that what I can say that defects process defects. So, then what you want? You want to set x in such a manner that the amount of defect or the severity of defect that will be at the minimum level. Okay. Suppose you are conducting uh, an experiment when you want to see that the impurity level in a particular product will be the minimum. So, that time it is basically minimization case. So, response surface methodology will, will be useful to find out the optimum process output depending on um, depending on, on, on the nature of the controllable variables and the relationship between the variables will dictate will dictate or will lead to the situation uh, to, to the level possible. What I mean to say? I mean to say that you want to set x in in a particular zone or a particular range so that y will have be having the optimum value that is the purpose of response surface methodology. So, it is basically a 
optimization technique. So, what I will do today, I will give you the general introduction to response surface methodology and then uh, we will show one method uh, called method of stiffest ascent when the purpose is maximization or method of stiffest descent when the purpose is objective is minimization. So, that will be discussed and with an example the a first order uh, response surface model will be discussed. So, let us see uh, what is RSM? I said a collection of mathematical and statistical techniques. This, uh, this helps in modeling the uh, relationship between y and x as well as it will help in analyzing the, uh, the behavior and finally, it will help us to optimize uh, the response. So, that is what is uh, response surface methodology. So, here I have given you a surface. If you carefully look into this, you see that there are two process variables temperature which is denoted by x 1 and pressure denoted by x 2. So, temperature and pressure that vary from certain, certain range within certain range. For example, here in this graph 100 to 160. I can say if it is 100, maybe it is 80 to 180 and again that pressure a 10 to uh, that 50 at that range it is varying. Now, and according if temperature and pressure is related to the yield, then what happened you are getting this surface, this surface the curved surface here this one is known as response surface. Okay. So, if you take any point on this surface and project towards this temperature axis and pressure axis, then you will get the value of temperature and pressure and the for this yield value is can be obtained if you if you keep the process temperature at that particular value and temp, uh, pressure at that particular value. What do we mean? We have we are giving we have given you here here one is this process yield. I think this is yield, and we are saying expected yield. And 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 then what happened? Then you see that this axis is your temperature. This axis is your pressure, and ultimately you are getting a diagram. like this. Okay. Now, if you take any point there here, any point suppose if I say this is my pressure, this is my temperature any point here and from that point you, 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 you when you, you project there suppose this projection is here and then you corresponding position you get there. So, then this is these are the two values which for uh, suppose if this is I can say that 130 degree 130 degree centigrade and if it is this one is my 25 psi and corresponding this y value is this. So, that means, if you keep the run the process at 130 degree centigrade temperature and pressure 25 degree cent 25 psi your yield expected yield value will be this. Okay. So, this is the way that response surface will be analyzed. Okay. So, this is the way response surface will be interpreted and that is what is in better manner it is given here or this is my response surface. So, you want to find out that response surface this is the first thing and then second one is basically that depending on the nature of the uh, nature of the output you want to maximize the output or minimize the output. If, if it is a maximization of output, you want to find out the point on this response surface where the output is the maximum and, and rather I can say that you will you, you have to find out the global maximum a zone you want to create that if you if you operate your 
your process within this that zone then you will have the uh, have the near optimal near optimal that responses okay so few, very few interesting things are that what is the response surface so all of you have gone through the regression so i have given you the regression like this y equal to x plus beta plus epsilon primarily in the regression chapter we have discussed the first order model that mean i can say that y equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta k x k plus epsilon and this portion is coming under x beta and epsilon is there. So, in general in general this if a, that mean this can be y can be written as f x 1 x 2 like x k and plus epsilon with reference to this example our y is f of x 1 x 2 plus epsilon. Okay. So, then the response surface is this response surface eta is basically the expected yield for different values of x which is function of x 1 and x 2. So, so far whatever uh, design we have employed experimental designs and the results what we got finally, everywhere I have shown you the regression equation. That regression equation basically talks about the response surface. By first order regression equation or first order model we are we say that that basically the interaction and the higher order effects are negligible only the main effects are of importance. So, in regression the main effects we have considered, but if you if you see the nature of this nature of this response surface it may not be a, a main effect model only there may be there may be interactions or higher order effects some kind of may be second order effects are there. So, by saying eta equal to f x 1 x 2. So, this may be a function of the main effects interaction effects and higher order quadratic may be the quadratic effects. So, you want to find out first this whether the first order model or second order model or higher order polynomial are required that you will be finding out and once you have that response surface you also want to find out where the optimum response lies. So, that is the purpose of response surface methodology. Okay. Now, what I will show you these two response surfaces here one is your first order response and another one is second order response. So, first order response and second order response how it be uh, looks like if there is no interactions and higher order effects. So, then the regress the response line will be this flat type this one. Okay. So, and if there is second order effect interactions then the regression line will surface will be that kind of this curve will be there curvilinear surface. And in the first case first case if you suppose you want to develop contours I also explained contours earlier I said that suppose this is your temperature and this one is pressure. So, then y contour the response contours response contours that mean for certain values of temperature and pressures what have been the re y response will be same for example, if it this that mean if temperature is this value pressure is at that value then response is y suppose this is y 1. So, any any point on this line is having same value for response, but if I took take a point here the temperature and pressure that uh, value will change like this. This is the temp process temperature, this is the process pressure. If I take this point, the temperature is reduced, pressure increased, but in all, both the operating 
uh, values in terms of pressure and temperature give you the same value of y. So, this is the contour. So, it may be the second contour, third con like this. Okay. So, this is y 2, y 3, y 4, y 5 something like this. Okay. So, if you do not have the interaction and the higher effects, then your respond contours or contours will be like this the parallel lines. Means, if the first order model is fit here, then if you if you develop the contour for the response, you will be having parallel lines. If your second order model is fit, then you see the contour. What is happening? This, this is the first contour y, y is 70, this is the second contour so y is 60, this is the third contour y is 50, fourth contour y is 40 like this. The reason is the maximum value is like somewhere here. So, so the second case the as per the, the contour is like this maximum value here and your contours are, contours are reducing like this. So, it is some kind of some kind of hill, some kind of hill. Here the maximum height, then this height, then this height, then this height, then finally this height. So you are getting this one with reference to this. So this is nothing but you just go periphery of the hill. It may may be it, it is basically so your case may be just reverse it can be it can be other way around also like this. So, in that case the response surface will be will will not be will not be like this it will be like this. What I mean to say it will be like this when the in between point it will be down like this. So, it is now if your maximization case suppose it is it is this is this is some kind of hill and it will minimization case say this is some kind of valley. So, your response surface will give you depending on the number of variables obviously, that uh, the surface will be different, but for the explanation point of view if we consider the two, res two uh, controllable factors or variables and then uh, if it is a maximization case and where the higher order interactions are they are including uh, the higher order effects, quadratic and higher order effects. So, you will be having a hill kind of structure or valley kind of structure depending on whether it is a maximization case or a minimization issue. Interactions or the effects are not there, then then what happen? It is a surface plane, it is a surface, maybe it either surface will be plane surface, some inclination will be there. Okay, it is not that constant that is slope. For example, here this surface. Okay. So, response surface methodology will help you in finding this surface and also helps you in identifying the optimum zone of operations. Okay. So, now let us discuss that what is the approach adopted by uh, in response surface. So, for this you require to have some more concepts. What is the what are those concepts? So, so let us let us write down change the heart. Okay. So, suppose you just think of for the time being you think of the same that pressure and temperature, pressure may be x 2, temperature is x 1. Okay. So, this these are the basically process controllable factors this will give you the design space and where you will operate. Suppose you just think of, so this is the overall operating zone you can operate means temperature from here to here, pressure from here to here. For that and you want to find out that should you work here 
operate the process here, so or should operate the process here. Suppose you are operating somewhere, but without doing any kind this kind of experiment based on process knowledge and maybe previous uh, experience you started with doing somewhere. So, there may be some technology changes and other things that have happened or you may be thinking that no, no, this is this zone, this operating zone is inferior, this operating zone is superior or this will give you my the optimum re response not this one. So, how do you know? So, for that purpose that you must know what is your current operating current operating operating conditions. For example, suppose you are doing here, then using response surface methodology, what you want to find out first? You want to find out the direction of improvement. If I we assume that this is basically the this is basically the region of optimum optimum then response surface will give you these directions it will give you these directions ok so first you approach each that you know your current operating conditions, then fit a do experiment here, fit a model response surface model and then from there analyzing that model you find out the direction of improvement. So, this is our direction of improvement. Okay. So, that means, your one set of experiment is not sufficient, one experiment is not set sufficient one kind, you have to have several experiments. So, set of experimentation, this is basically I can say you have to do sequential experiment experimentation. You do here, find out the direction, go to the second place, again feed the response surface and see that whether optimum point is reached or not. If not, again you find out the direction from there and in that manner you, you finally reach to the region of optimum. That is why response are very sequential in nature. Sequential in. So, you, you see that this is your current uh, operating conditions. Now, what is there? So, you have and in you know that in the operating uh, that zone. So, you if you operate here somewhere here the process output value response value will be somewhere let it be may be 67 and now if you go along this line suppose assume that you know then the 70, 75 these are the all the contours. So, that means this is the direction of improvement. But actually you do not know that and so what you want, you want this direction and response surface what it will do, it will first when you do conduct experiment here and then fit a um, regression model, that regression model will help you to go either this direction or other uh, this direction or other this direction means maybe this direction, maybe some this direction or this direction or this direction depending on the, the, the model will guide you. That is will which direction you will go, and the purpose is basically you want to reach the vicinity of the optimum. So that's why finds out the path of improvement towards the optimum. Now, if it is a maximization case, as I told you, you are climbing a hill. If it is a minimization case, you are descending along the or into the valley. That is the case. So this is what I, I have given you. Okay. So, now there are few more issues here uh, that issue is that when I you are considering such a bigger zone and at some uh, some zone you are working and if it is not the point of optimum what will happen 
that you will find out that the lower order model will become sufficient to find out the direction of optimum. You do not require to go for higher order model because this is this is the place where your optimi optimum value is not reached. This is the operating conditions where you are working suboptimally. So, under thus that condition because you want to go it is not a localized one you have a broader uh, perspective. So, you will see that at, at the aggregate level what happened the lower order model will work. So, at if, if this is not the point of optimum here you may fit a first order regression model and then from that reg, uh, from that model find out the point of optimum uh, direction of optimum and then follow that direction do the next experiment again fit the model first order model if first order model does not fit there that means you have to go for second order model that means there is a curvature or quadratic effect a point of optimum might have reached. Okay. So, if it is a maximization problem we will say that the method is the optimization method is basically steepest ascent method if it is a minimization one it is will be stiffest distance method. Okay. So, whatever may be the case, but let us explain only the, uh, the stiffest uh, ascent method because the descent will be there as the reverse. Okay. So, let us see that suppose the first order regression model is fit, then your predicted value will be beta 0 cap plus beta i x i sum of this. Now, if you if you plot the contours for x 1 and x 2 as it is a first order uh, model and that means, there is no interaction effect. So, you are getting a surface and where uh, there will be there will be parallel uh, lines which basically gives you the contour for response. So, here you see that y bar y cap equal to 10 y cap 20 y cap 30 like this. So, these are the contours. So, you are at present you are operating here. So, the now from the contour plot you know that where you should go you should go in this direct in this direction, but what is that direction. So, first where you are operating you have the origin. So, you take you take from origin a perpendicular distance towards this contour this these are all perpendicular to this you are getting a surface. So, perpendicular to that surface from the origin you move. Okay. So, normal to the fitted surface perpendicular normal. So, that means, what is the path of steepest ascent? The line through the center of the region of interest and normal to the fitted surface. So, here you basically started working here is the center and you have the surface. So, from here you take the normal path normal to this surface. So, you will be getting this is the direction. Okay. Now, what happened the steps along the path are proportional to regression coefficient very important. So, you, you have beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 like this. So, beta i and beta j. So, beta i basically you the how do you get this path using the regression coefficient the concept is that the path are proportional to regression coefficients number 1. The actual step size is determined by the experimenter based on process knowledge or other practical considerations. Experiments are conducted along the path of steepest ascent until no further increase in response are subchart. So, what I mean to say y cap is beta 0 cap plus sum of beta i cap and x i i equal to 1 to k this is our first order model. So, with reference to this temperature and pressure case we can write beta equal to beta 0 cap plus beta 1 cap x 1 beta 2 cap x 2. So, beta 1 is the regression coefficient for temperature let it be and beta 2 regression coefficient for pressure. Now, this beta 1 beta 2 will tell you which direction you will move. Okay. 
because that that will be uh, the the basically the uh, steps what you take you should not take along x1 or along x2 only your beta 1 and beta 2 the coefficient will guide you whether you will how much you will go along x1 and how far you will go along x2 so that we will be discussing definitely hmm. now concept is that how far you will go if i say if i say so you this is the zone you have started with this and you are moving to this direction so so that means what happened you were first you are experimenting here then suppose you want to experiment here again so that means how much you are moving from here you are you are here from x1 point of view x2 point of view we are here originally you want to go this so this much movement and here it is this and you want to go this this much movement so that means these are known as step size so step size for x1 you may choose or x2 you may choose that ok at this point suppose if it is x2 then this one is x2 plus delta x2 and if this is x1 may be x1 plus delta x1 if you choose delta x1 then delta x2 will be automatically determined because we have beta 1 coefficient here and beta 2 coefficient here with reference to the regress first order model. Now, then which variable you will choose? You will choose the this is in the step size for that variable where you have maximum knowledge or which is having the maximum contribution in terms of beta. So, that means the you start with the variable to, to find out the direct go to the next step for experimentation. You start with the variable which is having either the maximum beta coefficient or you have maximum amount of knowledge for that variable and then the other one will be determined accordingly because I you know y cap equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 this is known once you choose this delta x 1 and where the increase is beta 1 per unit then what will be the change in x 2 so that considering beta 1 cap and beta 2 cap you will be finding out the x 2 value so that is what we are and i'll tell you that the computation issue but the issue is that the actual step size means in order to go along this line you require to you require to choose steps that means how far you will go you you may say i will i will do here it may not work it, it may be the distance so high that in between there are points uh, which are basically uh, it is um, gives you maybe maybe who knows that the maximum lies here not lies here. So, this direction you got and you follow that direction and finally, uh, conduct experiment everywhere here, 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 here everywhere and finally, you will find out the position where the maximum value will reach and when you go beyond that the optimum value will decrease that is the concept I uh, will uh, is used here in the method of steepest action. Experiments are conducted along the path of steepest and no further increase in response is observed. What does it mean? Same thing suppose your current operating zone is this and you got the regression line that uh, what I can say that this one irrigation surface and you know the you know the from the contour you know this is the direction direction is known. So, here you conducted experiment you have got the y value response value suppose if I say this is response. So, th and then this is my first experiment experiment and my response value is this. So, this direction suppose you are doing here the second set of experiment your response value is this, third set of experiment here response value is this, fourth response value is this, fifth response value is this, sixth response value is this, seventh response value is this, eighth response value is this. So, what does it mean you are going along the direction, direction you are going and finally, your curve is like this. So, this is the 
suppose if it is the k f uh, that is m step this is this is the maximum one below this you have less value and above this also you have less value and here you got a curvature we will then uh, start with an example uh, and but i will co i'll complete the the example in the next lecture in this lecture just i will explain that uh, what is the uh, example and what the results we got but the details of the results all those things will be explained later a chemical engineer is interested in determining the operate operating condition that maximizes the yield of the process two controllable variables influence the process yield the reaction time and temperature the engineer is currently operating the process with a reaction time of 35 minutes and temperature 155 degree fahrenheit which result yield around 40% because it is unlikely that this region contains the optimum C fits the first order model and applies the method of stiffest ascent. Okay. So, that means, suppose you are you are again reaction time and temperature, reaction time and temperature and you are operating here, operating in current operating in 35 minutes and 155 degree Fahrenheit. 500 this is the center point. So, that means, I can say this 30 to 40 may be this one is 150 to 160 something like this. This is the range you are working with. So, you conduct an experiment and get the values and that experimental result is given here. Here what happened? Here a, a factorial experiment with center point is used and experiment is conducted fine. With this data what happened? The coding and the, there are three kind of um, three kinds of um, things to be estimated. One is the error estimate. So, error was estimated using the central data. Then your interaction estimation that is also estimated with the factorial data points and then through F test we say that interaction effect is negligible and then quadratic effects is estimated that how to estimate the quadratic effect the one lecture we have already given you using the central point how quadratic effect will be estimated. So, that was estimated and using F test found out that quadratic effect is not there. So, interaction is not there, quadratic effect is not there, then, then what happened the beta coefficients they are uh, significance was tested also using the standard um, devi uh, standard deviation of the beta coefficient and it was found that the standard deviation value is very low compared to the magnitude of the um, beta values like your our beta values are our beta values are 0 0.775 and 0 0.325 and standard error is 0 0.10 so they are quite large with reference to the stand, standard deviation so we can say that first order model is significant. That means, this model will help us in finding out the direction of uh, direction of optima. So, using this then as I told you that you first in the origin set the origin and and then you you find out the step size and then you, you, you go on changing the values of the two variables and conduct experiment one after another and get the response values. Once the all those response values you, if you plot you will be getting something like this. So, obviously, be based on the first order model and the subsequent cell experiment you have reached a to a point where step size I think this is 10th this 10th step size here you are finding out that what is the x 1 and x 2 value and that is giving you that what is the value of y? It is y value is all more than 80 percent. So, if you see, if you see this, suppose I say the tenth one, tenth one means your uh, temp uh, that natural variable that temperature and reaction time and temperature is in 85 minutes and 175 degree centigrade, uh, 5 degree Fahrenheit. 
your that response value is 80.3 80 80.3 this is the maximum value you reached so that means earlier you were operating 30 uh, for i think you are operating 35 and 155 so but that is a inferior uh, zone your better zone is definitely 85 and you know, 175 because the yield is increased from 40 percent to 80 percent okay so 80 percent so now what you require to do at this zone you conduct another experiment keeping the central cent center at 85 and 175 and again fit a first order re re response surface and you see that whether the first order response surface is sufficient or not if sufficient that is not the optimum point then you have to go for again using that response sur regression values response sur surface find out the direction again and follow that direction so long you are not getting a zone where curvature effect is there for example, the once we have fit the uh, first order effect in, in that new zone, what happened? We found out that that uh, pure quantity effect is significant, so it is in first order will not will not fit. You have to go for higher order model. Okay, so this is what basically the way a response surface will work. So in the next half an hour, what I will do? I will elaborately explain uh, the example. The concept is given to you now. Now, next lecture we will explain those concepts with reference to the example and we will show you the all the calculations and one and the results corresponding results and their interpretation and then what we should do next. Okay. So, to <coughs> conclude I say the response surface methodology is a very powerful technique and heavily used in uh, analyzing the experimental data particularly to find out the zone of optimum or uh, we want to go to the vicinity of the optimum and at the same time what happened once you know the zone of optimum you will set your process parameters accordingly and you get the best results what is achievable from that from that process you should not run a process at the uh, inferior level it should you should achieve the optimum one the best possible outcome or outputs from such a model it's a wonderful technique thank you very much